what does it mean to be aware, to be fully, deeply alive from moment to moment? Most of us have a distinctive awareness of our likes and dislikes. There's a sharp division. But is it possible to just be aware, to leave like and dislike behind, and simply see things as they are? Those times in which awareness is far beyond the mere focus of concentration, Krishnamurti calls choiceless awareness. As he has said, when you are very clear, there is no need for choice. It is a subject he returned to again and again over the years. Krishnamurti on choiceless awareness. How do you look at this marvelous sight, the beauty of this place? How do you, what does it mean to you? Do you observe it, aware of it, without any choice, without any desire, uh, just to observe the extraordinary beauty of the land? Or when we are aware, is there always a choice? I prefer this land to another land. I prefer this valley to other valleys. So there is always memory and choice operating. And can one be aware without any choice at all, just to be aware of the extraordinary sense of the blue sky, the blue sky through the leaves, and just move with it all. You understand what I'm So that there is no division between the outer and the inner. It's like a tide going out and coming in. There's an awareness of this world outside of us and an awareness of the world deep inside of us, conscious as well as the unconscious. When one is really deeply conscious, are aware there is no remnant or hidden unconscious movement. I don't know if we have gone through all this, we have done it, not merely listened to a lot of words. So awareness is this movement of the outer and the inner, and discover for oneself whether there is a division between the outer and the inner. What is concentration? To concentrate upon a page, upon a picture, to concentrate all one's energy upon a particular point, In concentration, there is always the one who tries to concentrate. And in that concentration, there is an effort and control. So there is a controller and the controlled in concentration. There is a division between the controller and the controlled. And so there is an effort, a sense of a division. Where there is division, there must be conflict between the controller and the controlled. 
That is generally what we call concentration. Now, is there in attention this division? Are you now? Are you listening attentively now? Listening to the speaker, what he is saying about attention. Are you actually listening? And when you really listen, there is no centre as the me who is listening. You follow me? We generally consider fear as something outside us. So there is this question of the observer and the observed. Now, is it possible to look at fear without the observer? So that you are completely in contact with it all the time. Being aware of fear without choice. Which means the choice implies the observer choosing whether I don't like this, I like this. Hmm? Therefore, he, the observer is ap- when the observer is absent, there is choiceless awareness of fear. All right. Hmm? All right. right. Therefore, the the word prevents being completely in contact with fear. Yes, yeah. words can be a screen. Yes, screening that's, all, us. That, that's all what we are saying. All right. So the, the word mustn't interfere. True. All right. We have to get beyond that. Beyond the word. Right. But is that possible to be beyond the word? Theoretically, we say yes, but the, we are slave to words. Uh, far too much so, uh, yes. I mean, they are obvious. We are slave to words. Right. So the mind has to become aware of its own slavery to word. Realizing that the word is never the thing. Right. So the mind is free of the word to look. That's all implied. Now, there is fear at the conscious level, which is fairly, one can understand fairly quickly. Hmm? But there are the deeper layers of fear, Hmm? so called at the hidden um, parts of the mind. Hmm? To be aware of that. Now you're talking about whether we can be uh, explicitly aware of the full reach of mind. Yes, full content reach of the mind, which is both the conscious as well as the deeper layers. The totality of consciousness. Yes, and can we be explicitly aware of all of that? Of all of that. I'm not sure. I say it is possible. It is only possible when you are aware during the day what you say, what you, the words you use, the gestures, the, the way you talk, the way you walk, the, what your thoughts are, to be completely and totally aware of all that. Do you think all of that can be yes, before sir. you in total, total awareness? Absolutely. When there is no condemnation and justification. When you are directly in contact with it. During the day, during the day, if you are aware of your thoughts, of your feelings, of your aware of the motives, all which demands a mind that's highly sensitive. 
uh, it seems to me you're, you're saying something like the key to doing this is a radical reversal in our point of view. It's as though we were prisoners uh, straining at the bars for the light that, and looking for the glimpse of light we see out there and wondering how we could get out towards it while actually the door of the cell is open behind us. If only we would turn around, we could walk out into freedom. So surely, sir, this day in this is involved the everlasting struggle, conflict, man caught in his own conditioning yes. and straining, struggling, beating his head to be free. Yes. So, and again, we have accepted with the help of religions and all the rest of the group, that effort is necessary. That's part of life. That's, to me, that is the highest form of blindness, of limiting man to say, you must everlastingly live in effort. And you think we don't and, have to? Not I think. It, it is... So it's not a question of thought. Thought is the most... Right. Uh, Let's delete those two words and just say we don't have to. But to live without effort requires the greatest sensitivity and the highest form of intelligence. You don't just say, well, I won't struggle and become like a cow. Right. Right. But one has to understand the hoax conflict arises the duality in us. So can one observe quietly, without any choice, without any say, you know, observe what is going on in ourselves. The mirror in which we see our faces. How do comb your hair, how you brush your teeth, how you shave or do your face up, and so on. Can we observe as closely, as definitely, as precisely as possible, without any distortion? That means we have to understand the movement of choice. Please ask yourself, why do we have to, why do we choose psychologically, inwardly, say, I'll do this, I won't do that. This is right, that's wrong. I'm violent, but I must become non-violent. 
I have pride, but I've become humble. You understand? This inward choice going on all the time. Is there choice at all when there is clarity? So we are asking, why is there this choice in us, apart from the choice of things? Could we look at it for a minute? Human beings throughout the world inherited probably from the from apes and so on. They are violent people, human beings are throughout the world. And he's, he says he realizes what is happening through violence, not only in himself, collectively, he says, that, let us be non-violent, let's practice non-violence, let's talk about non-violence, let us have, use that instrument politically, and so on. This has been one of the things that India has produced, non-violent, not only India, but others have talked about it long before. So, we are you are violent, if I am violent at all, we are violent. And then we say, I will become non-violent, which is a choice, isn't it? Where there is separation in my thinking, I can separate thought from action. I think one thing, and say other thing. Think one thing and act another way. That is separation, that is breeds conflict, hypocrisy. So one can go into this question of conflict very, very deeply. And when you begin to understand the nature and structure and the way of its subtlety, as you watch it, they are very watching, without any choice, that in that watching you will see that conflict ends, and that requires great attention to everything thought, every action, every way of inward feeling. And if we want to uh, if one wants to end that conflict we have to give tremendous attention to it. Not casual attention, not one day or one one week later, but keeping that attention moving all the time. Yes, sir, you tell me, be aware. I'm blind. I think that's an elephant. How am I? You follow my question, sir? Yes, yes. I am blind. And I want to see light. 
And you say, be aware of that blindness. I say, yes, what does it mean? Awareness, mindfulness, attention. How do you discriminate of this? I would say, yes, sir. Different, yes, I different. Say, yes. These three awareness, <coughs> mindfulness, and attention. I would say, attention, uh, awareness in which there is no choice. Right. Just to be aware. Moment you, when choice enters into awareness, it it's, there is no awareness. Right. And choice is measurement, division, and so on. Right. So awareness is without choice. Just to be aware. Yes. Say I don't like. I like this room. Is that's right. All that has ended. Yes. Attention to attend, in that attention there is no division. Also, that means no choice. <laughs> leap, leap for the yes, moment. Yes. Attention implies no division. Me attending. And so it has no it has no division, therefore no measurement, and therefore no border. One can be aware of what kind of dress you have. I may one may say I like it or don't like it. So a choice doesn't exist. You are wearing it, that's all. But I but attention In that there is no attender, one who attends. And so, and so no division. Well, but the Buddhist, uh, Buddha's teaching of the Satipatthana is that in the Satipatthana practice of meditation is that there is no discrimination, there is no value judgment, there is no like or dislike. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You only see as yes, it is. That's all. What if you totally attend with your ears, with your eyes, with your body, with your nerves, with all your mind, with your heart, in the sense, affection, love, compassion, total attention, what takes place? Of course, uh, what takes place is an absolute revolution, internal, and uh, no, complete no, no, I have, uh, no. What ha what is the state of such a mind that is completely attentive? <coughs> See, but it has no quality. But it has no quality, no center, no uh, and uh, having no center, no border. And this is an actuality, you can't just imagine this. If you are aware, aware, not say, well, I am aware, I, but I don't like that shirt, it's too blue. <laughs> so I was told this morning. <laughs> so are we aware in that sense, without choosing? A choiceless awareness. 
then if you are so choicelessly aware, then you are attentive. Understand? Choiceless awareness means attention, not cultivated. Say, I must attain. But becoming aware of the trees, the birds, the, the balloons going up the mountains, the light on the clouds, the, the evening, the moonlight, and so on. Watch, watching, aware of all this and your reaction to all this. And by not responding, not choosing, I like this, I don't like that, it's mine, it's your, you follow? Just to be aware. From that choiceless awareness there is attention, right? Attending with your eyes, with your ears, with your nerves, with all your being. So the quality of attention and the quality of inattention, not attending, are two different things. Where there is inattention, there is choice, unawareness, lack of attention. Then the recording process goes on. The old habit is established. But when there is attention, the old habit is broken. You got it? Will you do it? That's the fun, not just listen to a lot of words, but if one actually puts, you know, not into action. See the truth of it. 